Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan Murray again, and welcome back to my channel. So I'm here in Salt Lake City, Utah, and I wanted to change things a little bit by doing recordings in the mountain. So today I'm gonna be continuing the videos on augmented reality. We did some body tracking on the previous video. I also did some face meshing. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating some materials, randomized materials that we can apply to our face and basically allow us to track our face, but with randomization on it. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing. Let me go ahead and open up Unity. And this is the scene that we work on when we did the face tracking example. So I'm going to duplicate this and call it random. So it's going to be face tracking mesh random. There we go. Let's just double click it to open it up. And I'm going to be basically clicking on a button to regenerate the material that is associated with the face. So to do that, we're going to have to need uh, to add a button. So I'm going to right click on the canvas. UI and we're gonna create a new button and I'm gonna place it right on the very bottom in the middle so I'm just gonna say maybe we can just do around 215 also the text is way way too small so I'm gonna I'm gonna make that much bigger so let me resize the button first something like that works and then I'm gonna just reposition it on X and then on the text we're gonna say regenerate or generate random material which is what we're doing and I'm also going to increment the size of the text so we can see it and there we go and then this is gonna be generate and this is gonna be the label there we go and I think that should look great so what I'm gonna do is I need to create also a script that is going to control basically it's gonna listen for the event handler so it's gonna listen for the event that gets triggered by the handler. So let me right click on the scripts and I'm gonna create a new script. This one is gonna be called apply random material. Then we can click on the canvas and I'm going to associate that script with the canvas. There we go. And the other thing that I need is I don't wanna use the original face mesh, face mesh that we had. So I'm just gonna duplicate it. This one is gonna be, let's just call it random. And then the other thing that I'll do is I'll create a new material. I'll just do a default material so we don't change the original one and you because I want you to have the original one. So it's gonna be default and then the prefab, I'm just gonna drag it and drop it there so that we can apply the, the default material that we just created. There we go. And then I'm just gonna click on override to apply the changes to the prefab. And lastly, what we need to do instead of selecting the having the face face mesh. Associated with the AR face manager. I'm going to associate the new one that we just created There we go. And now we can just delete this one So now we should have the new one created associated with that. We should have a new Material and if I'm going too fast, don't worry about it because I'm gonna put this in github so you can download it All right, so we got that we got our button. So now what we need to do we need to do some coding So I'm gonna open up the apply random material script and what I'm going to need here is I'm going to need the button that we're going to that we just created. So I'm going to do private and then button, and I'm going to have to bring in the namespace for the button. That shows. Oops, there we go. And normally this should give me. Okay, so it's fine. We'll just type it in, and we'll just say UI. There we go. And our button should come enabled here. And then this one is going to be the button for the random material so we can just say apply random material button and then what we'll do is on the on the star we'll just do button on click and we'll just create a new handler then this one will be generate random material and this will just be a meta there we go and there we go we haven't created it, so it's complaining about it. So we'll just create it right here. And there we go. And I believe we need to, oh, hang, hang on. So we need to add the listener and the listener, it's gonna listen to, there we go. And it's not a method, it's a pointer to the, there we go. It's been a while since I created a, a handler and you can you'll notice that that I made some mistakes in there. All right, so now that we have that, 
what I want to do is I want to randomize the material. But right now we don't really have anything. We just have the button, but we don't know anything about the face mesh that we had as a reference in the R session origin. So what I'm going to do, this is going to be the face prefab. So if I double click on it, it, it'll give you all these different options. So let's go ahead and go back. So what I'm going to do is we're also going to be adding a reference to this prefab. So let me double click on the AR face manager and let's look and see what we have in here. This class is sealed, so we don't, we won't really have access to this, except that we can access it. Looks like we can access it by using this public, this public property. So let me see how we can, we can access this. And so we're going to get a reference of the AR face manager. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and go into the canvas, which the code that we assigned to the canvas. And this one is going to have a reference to that script. So it's going to be AR face manager. And then it's probably going to complain that we don't have, we don't have the namespace. We can look and check what namespace this is on. So this is on the Unity Engine XR AR foundation. So we'll just say using, there we go. And that should give us access to the face manager. So I'll just say face manager. And we'll also make it serializable so that we can associate it through the inspector. There we go. And now we should have access to that game object. So we can just say, yep, and we have access to that game object. If we go back here, that will be this game object that we have in here. There we go. And I'm just checking to make sure that everything, everything looks good. Okay, let's go back here. And this is how we're gonna access it. So I also wrote an implementation of a random material generator for my for another repo. And if you want to download this, this is in my Unity procedural generation in GitHub. So just go to github.com, Dilmer V, and then Unity procedural generation, and you'll be able to download this entire repository. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just basically copy this one. This is the only one that we'll need. And then I'll go back in here and we'll just make this one. I don't need an update method for now. So just gonna say private. We don't need to make it static and we don't need to make this an extension. So I'll just do it this way. And get random color is another function that I also have. So, or method so that we stay within the C sharp terminology. There we go. And the renderer, we don't really have that just yet, but we'll get it here in a minute. So we're also going to need that. So I'm just going to say private and then mesh renderer, face manager, face renderer. Doesn't matter what we call this, just so that it makes sense for us. And this one's going to be private. We don't need to expose this. Then what I'll do is I'll just get that from the star meta. We'll just say, get me the renderer and we'll just grab the we'll need to grab it from the face manager game object so get component and then we'll just need to get that component there we go and then down here what we'll need we can just assign it that way there we go and then we want to make sure that this is getting set if it doesn't get set it doesn't really make sense for us to to run this so let's make sure that it is set so i'm just going to check to make sure that this is not null and if it is null, I'm just going to return and also show an error. And we can say that the face manager didn't, did not get a mesh render. Okay, so it's just some logging just to make sure that we have set everything correctly. Awesome, so, so that should give us that. Now we need to call it. So we need to call it here. We'll just say face manager. And I don't really need to call it this way. What we'll need to do is let's do face manager, get mobjet, and then we'll need to apply the we'll need to apply the new material to that. So if you notice, I already did that here. And I'm, what I was doing with this code is I was implementing it for multiple for multiple game objects. So I think what I can do, I don't really need to specify any parameters, and I don't need to do this either. What I'll do here, I'll just say this is a random material. And then the shader name, we'll just use standard. And then we'll test that before we test it on the device, just to make sure. And let me see what else this is complaining about. Member names cannot have the same 
the same name as our enclosing type. Uh, oh, okay, I see. I name these the same as the class, so we want to make sure we can just say generate material. There we go, and that should work. And the last thing that I'll do, I'll just have to call that. So there we go, and I think that should do it. So let me just recap just to make sure we have everything that we need. We're going to declare a button. We're going to be associating that through the inspector. We're also going to be associating the AR face manager that we already have through the inspector. Then we're, we're going to create a face, basically a mesh render that we're going to get from the AR face manager game object. And we're going to add a reference. We're going to get that reference from getting the component that from the face manager game object. We're going to check to make sure that it is being assigned. And then we're going to generate a new material. So the cool thing with this is we can actually, every time we click on it, because we have an unclick event on that method, it's going, to, it's going to rerun this, which is going to regenerate a new material. So let's make sure that, that it's working. So we can go, let's go ahead, go ahead and go back. And now we're gonna have to change the inspector a little bit. So the bound that we're gonna need, we're gonna have to associate it. We're also gonna need to associate the the AR face manager. Let me make sure that I know where that is. And that is in the AR session origin. So we're gonna go back to our canvas and then drag and drop our face manager. And it looks like that it's working. And I think everything looks good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and build this and we can test it on my device and see how that looks and see if everything, everything is working. I'm just gonna check it one more time just to make sure make sure that everything is going to work and so this is going to get us the face manager then the mesh render and yeah everything should work so let me go ahead and build that now so i'm going to go to file build settings and let's go ahead and hit build and this one is going to be face tracking let me just call it face tracking i think that's fine i'm going to hit save and I'm gonna let it run and then I'll continue the video here as soon as it's completed. All right guys, so let me show you how this works. I'm gonna open up Unity and we can see that it's now generating the face mesh. I can hit generate random material and that should now be working just fine. So I'm gonna hit it multiple times and you'll see it working. So that's everything I wanted to show you guys, thank you. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. Either you're starting out or you're an advanced game developer, they have resources for you. And also find me on Patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes. I'm also posting early access to source code and the URL to the GitHub repo. So thank you very much, guys.